Who do we look at? <laughs> what? Who do we look at? Huh? Who do we look at? Who do we look at? We look at them. Well, good morning. Good morning. What day is today? <laughs> <laughs> I've put her through this three times before. <laughs> today is Mexico Day. Hoy es el día de Mexico. The day of Mexico. Yeah. Today is the day of Mexico. Baja. After all of the talk and the walk and the work and the repairs and all the friends we've made and the miles we've driven, we are about to enter Mexico. So exciting. This is exciting. A little bit anxious, just because that's how it's I am. Little. But um, we have prepared. We're probably over prepared because that's what we do. But we um, we're going to start the day. We're seven miles from the border right now, just outside of Tecate. We stayed at a nice state park in California. Uh, it's San Diego County. It's uh, the blah, 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 park. Potrero? Or that. It's that park. Is that how you say it? Yeah, I never remember. So we had a really cool drive in through the night last night. Looking forward to seeing what this looks like as we make the seven miles into Tecate. We're, of course, we're going to take you with us as we cross the border. We've read up on some things. We've watched some videos. And uh, I think what I've learned is that no two crossings are the same. Yes. Yeah, I mean, they're all, I guess, I guess it depends on who you get for Border Patrol as well. Yeah. Right? Like so, in, but yeah, different cities. Uh, Tecate is a, a much smaller town, so it's supposed to be an easier crossing, uh, less crowded. So that's why we chose Tecate. There's also um, Mexicali. You can go in through Mexicali. That's another popular spot, but it is a bigger city. And then, of course, Tijuana. Yeah. Tijuana? Yeah. Tijuana Tijuana. Cross in Tijuana? <laughs> so you could cross there, but we picked Tecate. And we picked Tecate. We've connected with a lot of truck campers in particular, and a lot of the people in truck campers that come across say it's a great place to cross. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to cross in Tecate uh, because it should be about an hour and a half drive for us to get across to the Pacific Ocean to the short little, to the small little town of Alacitos, where we're going to meet up with our friends Pedro and Z tomorrow. Yeah, how about I'm that? Excited. Looking yeah, forward to it. See them again. So to catch up on the backstory, so we connected with Pedro and Z last year and um, through Instagram, and that's where the best friends in the world are made, of course. So we connected and said, hey, let's um, let's get together and meet up. They wanted to drive Alaska to Argentina as well. And we said, well, if we're going to spend the next couple of years together, let's at least see how we work out. This past spring, we met up with Pedro and Z just outside of Joshua Tree National Park. Mm -hmm. We boondocked out there with them for a couple of days, had a great time. We're, we've been staying in touch. Um, they've got a truck camper like ours. We've been swapping stories and things that we're doing to outfit our truck campers. So really looking forward to meeting up with them again. Yep. And they are Roaming Adventurers on Instagram. You might already know who they are, but that's their, that's their hand. So we think we have the process down. Of course, when we get there, we'll figure out exactly what we need to do. But we've been, we've been told that you need to park before you actually cross the border. And then you walk across the border and you do all your paperwork. So we did ours online. Some things you need to know. Um, if you're going into Baja only for a week, you don't have to get an FMM, which is like your personal tourist visa. Um, but because we're going to be there for six months, we need to get our FMM. So we did that online. Printed it out. Thanks for giving away all our personal information. Is it on It there? says how old you are. Whatever. I'm 33. So we've got our FMM. <laughs> uh, the other thing we had to do is we had to get auto insurance. You can again get both of these at the border, but we went ahead and got them in advance. We went through Baja Bound as a broker, read great things about them, and ended up going with Chubbs is our policy company. So we did a full year policy. It was only actually like $30 more than the six months that we planned on being in Baja. Mm -hmm. So with these two documents, we, should, we shouldn't have much issue, of course, with our passports. That goes alongside the FMM. And then we've got our auto insurance. Uh, we've got copies of everything, of course, all of our important documents. We've got copies of the title, yes, copies of the registration. Copies. Make Even make extra copies of your license plate because I've heard some things if you want to go into that detail. I also heard all Mexicans will kidnap, rape, and murder you. So Not going to happen. 
Well, we'll let you be the judge of that. <laughs> so anyway, we made copies of everything. We're good to go, I believe. We've also got Everest paperwork. She's a little mellow. She doesn't know she's going to the beach today. She if, she, be so excited. if she knew that, she'd be happy right now. So we got her paperwork, which shows that she's vaccinated against rabies and all the other shots that she has. Um, but rabies is the big one. So we should be able to move forward from here. We're going to leave the campground. We got our seven miles to drive to the border. We will stop before we get to the border. Hopefully there's a nice big sign that says park here, all you American idiots. And we will park there. They'll take all of our paperwork with us. We'll walk across the border, get everything filled out. Then we'll come back to the U.S., hop in the truck, and then we'll drive through the border where we'll show all the stamped paperwork and so forth. So one thing about the FMM that we read is that just having it isn't enough. You've got to actually have it stamped, and nobody's going to tell you to get it stamped uh, until you get pulled over or if you get pulled over and, and bah. So you've got to walk across the border and get it stamped, otherwise it's not valid. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we got to go ahead and take care of that. Uh, otherwise, they'll let you just drive right on through and not even tell you, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, it is. The only other border we've crossed in the vehicle was Canada. Canada. And Canada that was, was super easy. Well, except for the first time. Well, I mean, yeah. except when they decided to search you. Old Fu Manchu tried to flip our truck upside down. It was crazy. Not going to go back that, to that. That's all they do is they just look at your passports and yeah, and then but, you go. So this is our first real border crossing. Sorry, Canada, you're not real. Um, but this is our first real border crossing where we're going to have to have all the paperwork in line. So that said. Also, you do not need a tip for when you go into Baja. Which is your temporary vehicle import. Yep. If you are only doing Baja and not the mainland, you do not need a tip. So don't worry about it. But if you are driving down to Baja to take the ferry across into Mazatlan, onto the mainland, you do need to get your tip before going into Baja. Or I think you can do it online. I've heard you can do it at the ferry. But you can do it at the ferry, too. We're not doing that yeah, just yet. We're not getting our tip, so... We'll tell you more about our plan in Baja a little bit later, but we're not going to be taking the ferry down there, so... We're not worried about our import vehicle, t temporary import, our tip, whatever you call it. We're not worried about our tip right now. And if you're only doing some time in Baja, you shouldn't have to worry about it either. Um, but do make sure if you're staying longer than seven days, you have your FMM. Make sure you do get it stamped, as we're hoping we have no problem with. And um, make sure that you have auto insurance. No matter how long you're in Mexico, you've got to have auto insurance. Mm -hmm. And there's great brokers. The longer you stay, the more discounted it is. So if you're just coming across for the weekend, it's going to be crazy expensive compared to an annual policy. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started, I believe. You ready for this? Yes. Ready for Mexico? Yes. I don't tacos. Have tacos? Tacos. Tacos. We're going to go find us some tacos. Two miles to Mexico. I'm thinking this is where we're supposed to park before we cross the border to get our paperwork stamped. Uh, but we're not exactly sure because there weren't signs. It just says parking. Well, it's definitely private. So, we're going to pay for it. Yeah. But it looks to be what you do. So. Parking. Mostly cars. I've seen one RV. So we think we found where we're supposed to park. I think. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. It's definitely, it's private. Um, it's a private area, so we're paying somebody to park, but it, there's a, a metered area, so I wonder if it's not the county or the, the yeah. town. So we're gonna go and try to get our paperwork taken care of so we can then drive across the border. You can see the wall in the parking lot. And we're going to do this without camera, so we'll check back in a couple minutes. So we're in Mexico right now. 
we problem just is, <laughs> where's our truck? It's parked on the other side. In the United States. In the United States. So now we are headed back to the United States and hopefully they let us in yeah. so we can pick up our truck and drive back to Mexico. Yeah. Fun start to the day. I'm laughing. You gotta laugh. $64 or 1,116 pesos. That's what our little mistake cost. So we did our FMM online, which was a great idea, yep. but we didn't print out the receipt. So I figured I'm, I'm, if I don't pay for it online, they're not going to let me print this out. And so I didn't print out the receipt. I printed out the documentation. That was the wrong thing to do. Yep. They could care less about the documentation. They want to see a receipt that you yep. paid. So here it is, our new <laughs> so receipt. That we, cost us $64. We had to do it all over again. But it was a good idea, I think, to park and go. There yeah. was a um, there was a bus couple in a bus that just parked at the border and um, did all their paperwork there. But I didn't want to hold up traffic, which there isn't a whole lot of unless yeah, there's I, hardly any right now because we're talking to the camera. There's a bunch of traffic <laughs> building up, but there was no traffic at all, so they were able to just park there and do all their paperwork. But again, us being a little over prepared, I didn't want to do that. So next step is. Drive over the border. Let's drive over the border. We've actually been to Mexico. Yeah, we, we had it. to walk in, walk down the street in Tecate, make a left, come back in through customs in the United States, yeah. which was easy. It wasn't hard at all. They didn't care. They knew what we were doing, and we walked right on through. And I made the bonehead mistake. We walked out of Mexican customs or my immigration, and I just turned and started walking back toward the U.S. <laughs> and they yeah. came out, sir. Sir, senor, senor, you have to go this way. <laughs> yeah. Canada, they would have shot us. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it was pretty... Right, because it, I crossed the border. Yeah, it was pretty crazy in Canada. Canada. But uh, and we were going to be fine. Mexicans were awesome they because... They didn't care. We probably would have had guns drawn if we got across the U.S. border because yeah. we would have been coming legally. Yeah. So, so. oh, well. Anyway, <laughs> let's drive. Let's get let's get over with this. I want to get to the like, beach. It was like exiting through the gift shop. They want you to like walk through Mexico before you go back in the, into the U.S. Approaching the border to Tecate. It's all these uh, paid parking places, places where you can exchange money to pesos, dollars to pesos. There's Tecate, the border's right this way, to Mexico. We're gonna stop right in front of the border, and Border Patrol's gonna come out and most likely search the truck and the camper. Everyone was very nice when we walked through, so I don't expect any okay, major issues. Put it down there. Okay. Uh, Ensenada? Ensenada. Okay. We don't have. Just our camper? Oh, no. Yeah. We, yes. Yeah. Super easy. So far, I don't know the street. <laughs> yeah, we walked down here. All right, so let's try to figure out how to get the heck out of here. Follow the signs in Sonata. Yep, straight. If we can fit it. Green light is green light. Yeah, I worry about the edge, but I think we're okay. We also we need to get some cash. We don't have any cash. That guy wiped us out of U.S. Yeah. They have Day of the Dead. 
dead step up. Phone says no service. I better have service. Yeah. Our cell phone service is not working, so we're trying to get to where we need to go the old fashioned way. By maps. Old fashioned way with a well, cell phone map. A cell phone map, yeah. We can give you the atlas if you want. The... Trying to call AT&T. Well, I'm trying to call you. Oh, okay. Verizon's not working. There you are. Hello? Hello. I can hear you. Yay, I can hear you too. That's a good first sign. <laughs> At least we can call each other. <laughs> it just won't let us look on maps. <laughs> or it won't let us put directions in. <laughs> but we can get text messages and phone calls. Our first Mexico traffic jam. Getting cut off by people in a lane that they shouldn't, it's not even a lane. The people that are making left turns are sitting in the intersection and not letting us go. We've sat at this light for forever now. <laughs> so crazy. Finally made it through. Nuts. Wow. All for a stinking light. I'm a little bit more relaxed now, but <laughs> this place. Let's get to the beach. Oh, Baja, you just bounced from one beach to the next. It's so fun. Sipping on coconut juice and margaritas. Go to Baja, they said. Go to it Baja, would be fun, so. they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Who is they? <laughs> Everyone that goes to Baja. So I guess this is the point where we say that we made it to Baja. We're at Alicitos on the Pacific. Beautiful sunset. It is, it's amazing out here. We were told we are going to fall in love with Baja. I'm pretty sure it's already happened. Uh, minus the traffic that we had to put up with today. But man, this place is awesome. Everest. Everest. You can't, you can't yell at her. Stop being cute. <laughs> So for seven, seven miles of driving to get to the border and then about 100 miles across um, the country, across the Baja Peninsula, it was, a, it was a pretty long day. As a driver, first time driving in, in Mexico, it, it, was, it was stressful. So got a little nap in, Lindsay sat out, watched the sunset, and, uh, and it, is a, it is a beautiful first day here. So we're going to go ahead and chill out for the night. Pedro and Z get here in the morning and we are super stoked about that. So we're gonna be hanging out with them for the next four days. Four days in Baja. A couple days here on the beach. A couple days we're gonna go inland. And uh, we're, we're super stoked about it. So we'll be bringing you along with us. Oh, 
I love it here.